Hey guys, today in this video I want to talk about adding some articulation kind of to your little Machine and Krieger 135th scale capsule kits here. Now this is an armored fighting suit from the 35 Gachinen Machine and Krieger capsule uh, set. And when I say I want to add articulation, it's not that I want to add joints that it can move, it's just that I want to replace the joints so that it will be posed in a more exciting you know, action pose rather than just this uh, generic standing pose, which the standing pose for the Machine Krieger kits always looks really nice. It's cool looking, but I just want to make this one be a little bit more exciting, something a little bit more cool. It's something that I want to try for a long time. Uh, and so basically what we're going to be doing is cutting out the existing joints, replacing them, and just changing the pose in the process of doing that. So simple tools we're going to need is uh, just a knife and cutter for doing the cutting away of the joints. You're also going to need a set of drills. Actually really, in this case, we're really only going to use the one millimeter drill. Uh, so this is a really nice drill set here from Mr. Hobby. It's also in collaboration with USA Gundam Store. So this particular color version with the USA Gundam Store branding on it, you can get, of course, at usagundamstore.com. Otherwise, there's just the regular version. They just come in different colors. Uh, but this set from Mr. Hobby is really nice. Just because you don't have to worry about changing your drill bits if you just have this set on hand. These are like the most common drill sizes that you're ever going to use for the most part. So you don't have to ever worry about changing the bit. You just grab whichever one you need. It's very convenient. So we have to use that. We'll also use some um, epoxy putty in this case I'm using this is just Tamiya basic uh, epoxy putty I was already opened it so I just got it here in the bag because you're not supposed to leave it out and you will need some one millimeter rod because this is small you're probably not gonna be able to use anything larger than one millimeter so we'll just stick to that for this and uh, whether you're using brass or aluminum probably doesn't matter for this scale it's so small if you're using if it's a larger scale you might want to use brass as I think it's probably a little bit stronger but I don't have any one millimeter brass on me at the moment so this aluminum will do fine you're also gonna want some sort of cup or dish or something to have a little bit of water on hand when you're working with the epoxy putty uh, having some water on your fingers or tools whatever you're using to manipulate the putty will help to the putty not to stick to what you don't want the putty to stick to so just have a little bit of water on hand and then some sort of tool for manipulating the putty as well too so i'll probably just be end, uh, end up using this it's just a stir stick i believe from tamiya but you can use really whatever you want for that as long as it's something hard and relatively small something like a toothpick or something would also work perfectly fine as well too so the first thing we need to do is eliminate the existing joints so what i'm going to do is basically take off our arms here and also you'll notice i've already begun the process of filling in the gaps on the inside of the leg so the inside of the leg has these four uh, hollow gaps there that I already put some putty in and just in the process of just kind of sanding that up cleaning that up but it's not really gonna matter for the process of what we're doing today I'll work on cleaning that up kind of as we go along so here is our first arm and what I'm going to do is where you can see there's that bit up there at the shoulder and then at the elbow that's meant to look like a kind of cloth covering over the joint there uh, basically we just need to cut that away what we're going to do is in this uh, bicep section and this forearm section on the, in this case it's the uh, laser forearm there for that we're going to drill holes in that replace it with this uh, wire here or the rod there we're going to drill holes in those and then replace that with some rod and then use the putty to fill the gap to basically recreate this uh, well, like what you see there on the stock kit we're just going to be recreating that in a different angle so that we can have it in the pose that we want and two things that i want to say as we get started number one i've not yet ever tried this before so this is going to be my first time trying this it seems simple enough though i don't think it's going to be too difficult a task i'm sure i'll be able to manage i have uh kind of done something similar with the putty and I've worked a little bit with resin kits as well too, basically uh, pinning with the rod and stuff. So the different steps of this technique I'm familiar with, I just haven't done them in this particular way before. The other thing is that I am also gonna have to be careful to keep track of which parts go to which limb. So like that these two parts are for the uh, left forearm and then I'm gonna have to just keep track of which ones are for which arm, whatever, which leg. So shouldn't be too difficult, but I'll just have to try to keep that in mind. All right, so once I've got those separated and now all cleaned up, I'm ready to drill. Now, one thing to note is that the hole here where the arm needs to plug back into the body, that's actually a two millimeter hole. Uh, so using a two millimeter rod would be best so that it can plug right into there. But the problem is that two millimeter, I think is gonna be cutting it kind of close to try to fit into there. And also it's hard to bend a uh, two millimeter rod. I mean, it's only two millimeters and versus one millimeter. It doesn't seem like a big difference, but it's a little bit harder to bend in this very small scale like that. So I think I'll just stick with one millimeter. And what I'm gonna do instead is actually maybe a, a little bit creative uh, and I'll show this to you guys here. So we'll take that off. And uh, what I'm going to actually do is drill this out more and replace that with a chunk of runner 
that I can drill a one millimeter hole into very easily. So like I said, always convenient to have these on hand. So I'm going to turn this into a three millimeter hole. Uh, then I can just cut a little chunk of runner. Let me just drill a hole here. Like that. And we'll take an old runner here and just cut off a little section of that. I didn't measure that first, but so let me just go ahead and make sure that that's the right size. Yep, that fits in there just right. Now we do need to just cut a smaller segment of that. I'm not exactly sure which is going to be kind of the best way to go about this. So I'm just going to try this out. So now I've just got this tiny little chunk of runner there that I'm going to attempt to drill a one millimeter hole through the center of. Then I can pop this into there. There's that and now, yeah, just pop this into place in there and I'll put a little glue in there as well. There, now we've got a one millimeter hole instead of a two millimeter hole. Now, uh, for the other ones, I've already gone ahead and drilled the hole in the uh, bicep and forearm piece of this. So we basically just need to cut a little piece of our aluminum rod here. Wedge that in there really good and clip off uh, more than I'm sure I'm gonna need. So you can always cut it down more later. But there you go, that'll be the gap in there. And I actually probably could have uh, cut a little bit more than that actually, but so now we can bend this to the pose that we want. And in the top of the arm there as well, I'm gonna cut a little bit more this time because don't want to cut, again, don't want to cut too little. Now, to be honest, at this point, I actually don't know the pose that I want to do with this. So I will, basically what I'm going to do first is just to do this for all the limbs so that I can kind of manipulate it and then kind of sort out how I want to do the pose. But I think I want to do sort of like a, a shooting pose here with this and I need to have the legs bent a little bit as well too and the other arm bent a little bit. And this arm is going to ultimately be kind of straight since it's going to be in a more like shooting position. So. Let me go ahead and also get the joint parts cut out for the shoulder and elbow of the other arm as well too as the knee parts for the legs. And then as for the hip joint, basically these just plug straight up into that hip section. But what I'm going to do is then just replace that plug. So I'll just drill a little bit down in more into this section here and here for this uh, diaper looking hip section there. Just cut off that tab and drill a hole up into there instead. All right, so after a little while, basically, this is what I'm gonna be going for and the pose, something like this. Now it's missing the shoulder armor and also the knee armor panel, so I'll uh, put those back on in a little bit. Also the pilot figure head I have left out for the moment, but just generally you guys can get the idea for the pose and what you can do with this. Now, the one thing about this too is that it's going to make the arms and legs all look longer because you're kind of like basically extending out the proportions a little bit by adding the articulation to them, so or uh, maybe those uh, bends to the armor. This is going to make the limbs all look a little bit longer, so it's going to mess with the look of the arms and legs being usually a little bit shorter than this. But you know, it is pretty cool to see a uh, Machine Krieger kit in an actually like kind of action pose, somewhat dynamic action pose is pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do now before we get to the epoxy putty is just put a little bit of super glue on these just to make sure that the rods aren't going to want to pop out anytime later. Nothing's really glued at the moment except for the rods and the feet actually. So let's get a little bit of super glue in there, wait for that to dry, and then we'll get to epoxy puttying back in the joints. Okay, so now we're ready to get all down to business. I finished sanding off uh, the putty filling in the holes on the inside of the legs there as well too. Got all the joints glued so it's now all glued into place for the most part. I guess I still need to tighten up that one a little bit there too, but for the most part everything's on there. I did have to do a little bit of cutting to modify this shoulder armor flap over the top of there because as it is, the shoulder armor can only go up so far because I raised the arm up so high. I just do a little bit of cutting on that so that I could actually have that up higher to accommodate that. That was really the only flap that I had to mess with. I thought I would have to modify the center one there, uh, but it seems to be fitting on there okay from my positioning of the legs, so that's kind of all right. So that means we're ready to get down into putting. Now these knee armor bits keep coming off. I'm just gonna go ahead and take those off now. And actually the shoulder armor we don't need on at the moment either. So just kind of take off these bits that we don't need on right now. 
armor flaps around the skirt and everything. So we're ready in. So for this epoxy putty, if you guys are unfamiliar, I guess it's two parts. So you need to cut uh, an equal amount of both and then just mix it up and then you're good to go. Uh, without fail, I almost always cut off more than I'm gonna need uh, when I'm making some epoxy putty, so I always have some leftover. So for this, I know I'm really only gonna need a little bit, so I'm gonna not trying to not overdo it. And so this is where your water is gonna start to come in handy because this stuff is quite sticky, and just dip your fingers in a little bit of water will help it to not stick on your fingers. Now, when it comes to working with epoxy putty in general, uh, if you guys have any uh, helpful tips or if you notice that I'm doing something strange or unusual in the way that I work with epoxy putty, I'm always open to uh, you know hearing from you guys in terms of knowing the correct way to do things, but just this is how I've done it uh, and it works well enough for me. I think some people will probably maybe say that you should be wearing gloves or something like that. As far as I know, it's not like that toxic to just have it on your skin. I don't think that it's a problem, but like I said, if you guys know better, feel free to let me know. So there you go, once you got that all wadded up into a nice uh, light yellow tan color of chewing gum there, you've got some time to work with that, so you don't need to be super in a hurry for that to dry. Uh, you've, you, can, you, know, you can work with it for a little bit. And so basically what I'm going to do is just take off little sections like that and just roll it here on the cutting mat so that I've just got basically little strips of it that, that I can just use to just wrap around in my joints here. My little tool here as well, I've also just dipped in water to just get some water on that. And there's no real trick to this, I don't think. Basically you just jam it in there <laughs> and that's really kind of all there is to it. Even this tiny little bit that I've cut off here for filling this knee joint is seeming like it's gonna be even too much, but we'll see here once we get it all stuffed in there. It's looking like too much for that. Mm, it's looking a little thin, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more to work with in there. And you can see that the process of like using this tool to just like push it in is also creating all the, like the little, uh, I don't know, detail in there that's making it look like cloth like making this sort of like on a texture sort of that. So it's really kind of, you're doing both. You're doing like the, the work of getting the putty to where you need it to be and also shaping it to how it needs to look as well too. So it's actually quite convenient. And after, you know, just 20 minutes or so, I guess it didn't really take all that long. All the joints are now stuffed and it's looking so much better. It looks so cool, just like how it is right now. I gotta say, let's put some of these uh, parts back on here so we can get the full effect of how it's looking pre-painting anyway. There we go, very cool. Now I don't have the head in there at the moment and as I expected, I still had some putty left over, just a little bit there, so I did pretty well. But uh, obviously it didn't really take a whole lot of putty there and you get it looking really cool. So there are some hoses, if you guys will remember, these little hose bits that go from the side of the legs up into the backpack. So obviously because I changed the position of the legs, these pre-molded, like pre-shaped ones are obviously not gonna fit anymore. So I'll have to just make some new ones. That won't be a big deal. And then I'll just have to paint it up. So, I mean, I'll do a little bit more work on it, but for this video, I basically just wanted to focus on just replacing the joints. Once I've got this painted up and everything, I'll show you guys what it looks like ultimately for just like the final review of that, I guess, just to kind of see what it looks like when I'm all done with it. But I'll work a little bit more on this and have that for you guys out soon enough. For now, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any other questions or suggestions related to uh, the topic, what we covered in this video, again, guys, if you have any other suggestions, a better way to do any of this stuff, do feel free to let me know. Uh, but hopefully this video was helpful, interesting for those of you guys who are interested in this kind of stuff. Obviously the same method could be applied for any Gundam kits if you're doing an HG kit or something like that. Now obviously you have to fix the joints in place, you wouldn't be able to move the joints anymore, but if you're willing to do that on your HG kits, you can give them kind of this like, uh, or I guess it doesn't have to be HG anyway, you could do it for anything, but for something larger, maybe you don't want to use uh, exactly the same technique, but just to cover your joints, make it look like I got some like some cloth covering over the joints could be pretty cool. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, thank you to us at Gundam Store as well for making it all possible. Uh, we don't sell these capsule kits, unfortunately, at US at Gundam Store, but we do sell other Machine and Krieger kits and obviously some of the supplies and things that you guys saw me work with. So check out the link to US at Gundam Store there down below. You can use my coupon code there, Zacharelius10, save 10% off everything there on the site. And thank you all so much for your support support 
whether that be liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that's greatly appreciated. And until next time, guys, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.